Hello, and welcome to the ABCs of AVM podcast, where we're focused on bringing you the latest on digital transformation and how your organization can benefit. As we move through our time today, we hope that you find value in learning what industry leaders are doing to accelerate their business results through leveraging best practices and having a strategy in place to succeed. With that, let me share a bit about the organizations and let me introduce the two thought leaders that will be guiding us through this podcast today. We have Holly with us and Holly, would you like to introduce yourself a little bit about your role and tell us a little bit about Demand Chain as well? Sure. My name is Holly Hartling. I'm a consultant working with Demand Chain based in Minneapolis, Minnesota. I am a certified admin and have about seven years experience working on the platform. Uh, with Demand Chain, I work on a team called Platform Commitment, and I have a great roster of clients that I work with on a weekly basis on their sales cloud and Pardot instances. Uh, I provide staff augmentation for organizations without a dedicated Salesforce admin. I troubleshoot issues with current automation. I also share best practices and propose new features to optimize my clients' platforms. And I do initial setup and training with new users. I also am uh, always excited to do marketing audits prior to automation implementations. And I love coming up with a list of everything that my clients will need to do to fully optimize their Salesforce connected campaigns. Perfect, great. Thank you for joining us today. And Tracy. Yes, good morning everybody. Tracy Ellis, I'm the CEO of Leadis. We have been focused on the Marketo um, Adobe platform for the last five years um, after my career of leading technology companies through market penetration and demand gen strategies. We realized that there was just really a gap in the number of marketers who really were up to speed on marketing automation and wanted to jump in and help. So we founded Leadis. Um, so we specialize in marketing automation and strategy as it relates to driving that engagement by leveraging, leveraging the Adobe suite, specifically campaign, Marketo Engage, and Visible. And our goal is to deliver campaign programs that drive purposeful engagement that align sales strategy and marketing execution to drive business results. So really, you know, focused on ROI and moving companies forward in the age of marketing technology. Very good. Thank you. And really helpful to have both of you on today. And I am uh, Jennifer Sherry. I'm the Vice President of Partner Strategy at Leadis, and super excited to walk everyone through uh, best practices of ABM and how we can all benefit. Um, a quick question before we start the podcast. As we're all working virtual, I'm wondering, Holly and Tracy, do you have any mascots for your home office? Um, this is Tracy. I do. Um, I am lucky enough to live with the Letus mascot, who is my son, Julius, who will be 13 at the end of this month. So he's our self-proclaimed mascot. Usually he's a mascot in the office because we have really great treats when we, when he gets to come in there. So at home, it's a little healthier, but nonetheless, he still roams around and comes in my office on a regular just to chit chat. So he's here supporting the Letus way. Awesome. Awesome. And Holly, how about you? Well, um, I'm not sure if I have such a, um, a, a mascot per se, but I do have a, um, a montage on the, I have a, a mirror sitting on my desk and have a montage of post-it notes that are, um, you know, cheerful and outline the um, various um, identified uh, attributes that um, Demand Chain was looking for when they hired me. So mm -hmm. those are trustworthiness, expertise, ownership, long view thinking, personality, and enduring quality. And mm -hmm. uh, so I, whenever I start my day, I take a look at those items and, um, you know, think through uh, how my work for the day looks through those filters. And that's, mm -hmm. uh, that's what gets me going. <laughs> oh, I love that. That is awesome. Mm -hmm. And uh, just with that, I think I have a question for Tracy um, around ABM as we kind of get started with the podcast. Um, when teams ask about ABM and how it fits into their overall digital marketing strategy, what are some things that you share with them to get them kind of thinking in the right way around the ABM program? 
Sure, sure. I think that ABM for people, you know, seems to many like it's some new jargon, some, you know, exciting, shiny new thing in the marketing world. And I like to remind people that, you know, ABM stands for account based marketing. And really, it is a transformation of what um, sales based um, account penetration was of years ago, right? So companies would look to their salespeople, they would get a specific list of accounts, and those salespeople would go after those, you know, accounts specifically to target them and, and win those kind of kingpin accounts. Um, now, account based marketing is taking that same list and leveraging it so that you can also be doing marketing things in advance. So getting them to, you know, focus on that, you know, first funnel touches from a marketing perspective. So that marketing is aligned to those same accounts and you can actually automate how you're reaching out to those people to keep them engaged and keep them informed and kind of tell them a story prior to sales getting their hands on them. So it's really something that people have been doing before and now it's just automated and more driven by marketing. Perfect, very helpful. And that kind of leads well into my next question for Holly. Holly, what are some questions teams might ask themselves to understand if they're ready for a program like ABM? Sure, the first question that I encourage everyone to ask is, what is my current state of marketing and sales? Have I audited my strengths and weaknesses of my current marketing programming? And is my traditional looking funnel working? What parts of it work? Um, if I'm missing components, am I willing to spend budget to get those up to snuff? So am I currently tracking my efforts across the different campaigns in the different areas? Um, you know, am I considering uh, messaging around lead generation, lead nurture, brand awareness, and then re-engagement campaigns to win back uh, lost, lost opportunities. So um, if, my, if my current state is not addressing all of those um, concepts within a traditional funnel, uh, I take a look at, am I willing to fill in those areas first? And, um, and then do I have metrics and visualizations that show me where those are, those leading and lagging indicators are? Um, if I'm not doing those things already, then I want to fortify those efforts first, and then I can um, I can start to look at a more targeted uh, effort with ABM. Very good. And speaking of those targeted efforts, um, what are a few best practices around ABM that might be helpful to share with our listeners today? Absolutely. So I would say that um, having a sponsor and a Cross department team that's committed to and rewarded for the success of this program is key. Um, I would say that being on the same page with all of your business rules about your interactions with clients through the lead and conversion to opportunity process and having a document that, that governs those that everybody's agreed upon. Um, another thing would be making sure that your, um, your current data situation is um, optimal. If you are, um, if you're missing data or you need to do a data cleanup, I would say that that's one of the first things that you'll need to do. Um, you need a very robust repository of information on your clients in order to slice and dice and understand um, who might be best for targeting with an ABM strategy. And then um, I, I would say that uh, something that you need is a goal and um, a definition of success. Uh, not only from a sales winning standpoint, which of course is the bottom line and it's the most um, important thing that everybody cares about, but a win can also look like knowing your customer base and their needs and their motivators uh, better, as well as um, how you can eliminate roadblocks to purchase. So that's a uh, those are, th those are some things that I think you should have in place um, prior to uh, even beginning to look at your team or your tech stack. Mm -hmm. Very good. And speaking of those roadblocks, I know that at uh, ABM programs, a lot of organizations, if they haven't done them before, it might seem a little daunting or overwhelming. Uh, Tracy, how would you say that an organization would start to prepare for a program like ABM? 
Yeah, so I think with ABM, the first thing is that you need to have alignment between sales and marketing in regards to which accounts you want to be targeting. Um, so, you know, really having an initial conversation and buy-in from sales that this is a strategy that is going to work for the organization to penetrate those specific accounts that you want as part of your account-based marketing program. Um, and I think that once you get that list next is to really ensure that you have good contact information for not only just the key people that you want to speak to, but what I would consider groundswell type content. So people that may have influence within the organization um, that will you know, be having conversations or perhaps maybe part of meetings to make sure that as you start reaching out to people, when one person talks to somebody else within the organization, it's gonna be you know, your company that they bring up. So if, if somebody, for example, from marketing were to go to talk about, hey, what would you use for attribution, right? And they're also been talking to the IT team or, you know, they've been marketing to the IT team saying, hey, Visible is a great, you know, tool for attribution, right? That's where I've heard or I've seen this tool, right? You start to line up those resources and get people all thinking the same way. So, you know, identifying who the accounts are and then identifying that broader base of contacts within those accounts that need to be marketed to. Perfect. And I think you're right on with the alignment of sales and marketing. That is a step that is so key and making sure that any program really, um, especially ABM, is successful. And speaking of success and measuring that, um, Holly, you shared some best practices earlier with us. I'm wondering, um, from the programs that you've run with ABM, what are some measurable results that you can share um, from those experiences? Sure. Um, I would say that one of the uh, hidden best places to look for an ABM campaign to run would be uh, within your former clients um, or lost opportunities. If you uh, look at running a re-engagement program, you can really take a look at what you learned from um, those past clients or from lost opportunities. Um, for instance, I had a client take a list of 250 former lost clients. Uh, they whittled down that group from uh, the larger group to a desired group of about 50 that they wanted to win back. Based on the strength of their relationships, they decided to handle about 10 of them with ABM efforts. Um, they further narrowed that down by um, having a sales intern work on investigating the 10. Through that process, they added about 15 new contacts to the accounts, um, you know, various people in uh, various uh, operational uh, roles within the organization. Then they created two different tracks. Um, one, one drip based on um, the, the uh, 40 of them that they wanted to uh, just cast a, cast a wide net and see if they could um, capture some, some clicks and, in, and interest. And then on the other 10, they started a drip campaign with, dedicate, with a dedicated landing page. And um, they tracked the efforts and they added people to call lists that they could then um, handle with a more, um, you know, white glove approach. So within that, they were, uh, so far, they're still running this campaign, but they have won back five of their former clients and um, they have uh, been able to onboard them with minimal effort. And um, they're, now they're just looking at that uh, recurring revenue. And that's based on letting them know, letting those former clients know about changes that they had made to their process, made it easier, or um, adjusting, the, um, adjusting the product so that it fit their needs better. Um, and and mm -hmm. other, so it's a really, really targeted and narrowed down process. And they've had great success with it and um, you know, are continuing to uh, look at which of the 50 or the 40 that had, uh, that had done some clicking and they're focused on those next. Very good. And you touched on something I think is really key and that's process. Um, and Tracy, just kind of going back to what you were saying about sales and marketing alignment, um, what kind of dynamics should management start to look at as far as the team and the process that they might want to be aware of as they start the Airbnb program? Well, I've always said throughout my career that there is, a, you know, sales and marketing 
the relationship between the two is kind of like a dysfunctional family, right? The minute they say that they're not dysfunctional and it's perfect, that's when you should really like watch out for them. There's probably some deep hidden, deep rooted secrets. So there's always a level of kind of conflict between marketing and sales. And, you know, I think that it's important because what that lets us know is that the two teams are still communicating, right? And that they actually care. It's when either of those teams goes quiet and no longer is communicating with the other that there is a bigger problem to, to be had. And so I think that one, you will see as you roll out this ABM process that especially for organizations that are doing it for the first time, that there may be some learning in this. You might not perfectly hit it out of the park. And so there needs to be some forgiveness on, you know, both sides, you know, maybe, maybe sales didn't really understand, you know, fully the list of accounts that they were providing. Maybe, you know, one of the tactics marketing used wasn't as successful as they thought it would be. Right. So to really have an open feedback loop between sales and marketing, um, and know that there are going to be some things that need to be ironed out once the program gets off the ground. And just like with anything with automation, ABM is no different. It's all about iteration. So get your program started, right? Share what you're doing, be transparent about it with sales. And then as you start to get engagement from people and you get sales to connect with people and you get follow up from them, get that feedback from sales so you can constantly make tweaks and iterations to the ABM program so that it becomes more and more successful as you move forward. Very good. And Absolutely. so true. Yeah, to your, to your point, Tracy, I found that when you pair ABM efforts with agile principles, um, when you have those roles like a project manager to drive the project forward and where you work in an iterative, um, in an iterative way where you're delivering small wins, on a pace that doesn't burn everyone out, um, you're able to pivot and, uh, and better, better serve your end customer. Awesome. Very awesome. good. We had a lot of great nuggets today that were shared. And I think that there's probably a lot more um, that we could expand upon, but um, we are coming up to the end of our podcast for today. Uh, Holly, as far as, you know, all the great learnings and everything that we talked through today, what are what the things that you would say you want our listeners to walk away from? Uh, I would say that um, plan for the long term um, and plan for success and plan for failures and how you're going to respond to those and how you're going to um, be willing to try things more than once and um, how you will react if uh, things are a wild success. Um, you don't want to stop marketing just because you have won all of the business that you think you can handle. Um, theoretically, you want to continue to fill that pipeline over time. So um, don't, uh, don't be short-sighted you you know, and, and stop if you have wins. But also don't be, um, don't be discouraged and uh, continue to work, as we said, iteratively um, to, to make the, the tweaks to your, your programming that will, um, you know, continue to help you resonate with clients and let them know that you're, you're listening to them and you're responding to their, uh, that, their business needs. Very good. And Tracy, what is that one thing that you want our listeners to walk away with today? Yeah, I think just remembering like with everything, you know, it is a process. So you are not just going to write down what your ABM plan is implemented and it's going to work perfectly. And so people have to be patient, they have to be persistent, and they have to be transparent so that they can, you know, make the adjustments on the fly, as Holly mentioned, being agile to get to the end point that you're trying to get to and be patient with getting there. Perfect. Very good. Well, thank you both, Holly and Tracy, for all your knowledge today. I know that I learned a few things myself and was taking notes. So um, hopefully our listeners learned a few nuggets as well. And that will conclude today's podcast on the ABCs of ABM. And we hope that everyone can join us for our next podcast. Thank awesome. you. Thank you so much for having me.